In this video, we are going to learn three applications of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that the Pythagorean theorem states that for any right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, A squared plus B squared will always equal C squared. So the first application is that it will allow you to find the height of an isosceles triangle. So let's say we have an isosceles triangle which again means that two sides are congruent, and we know that each side is 13 between the two congruent sides, and the base of this triangle is 10. We can figure out the height by drawing in the height, which will end up being a perpendicular bisector of the base because it's isosceles. That means the base has been cut in half so that each of these little parts are 5 and 5. We can use the Pythagorean theorem because the two triangles we've created are each right triangles. We, so we could use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out our height h by doing 5 squared plus h squared equals 13 squared and solving this to find the height. So the basic technique is if you have an isosceles triangle, draw in the height, and by doing that you've created two right triangles, and you can use the Pythagorean theorem on one of them to figure out the height. If we solve this, we'll end up with 25 plus h squared equals 169, and once we minus 25, we end up with h squared equals 144, so the height equals 12. Keep in mind that 5, 12, 13 is one of those Pythagorean triples that it's nice to remember. Another application of the Pythagorean theorem is it can help you to prove or derive the distance formula. Remember that the distance formula says that the distance between any two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So if we take two points, and we're not going to think about the specific coordinates, I'm just going to call them x2, y2, and x1, y1. What we can do is we're trying to figure out this distance, but we have a right triangle that we'll always be able to create. And then what we're really trying to do is finding the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Let's figure out what these two sides are. This side right here is the change in the y coordinates. So it's y2 minus y1. This side right here is the change in the x coordinates. So it's going to be x2 minus x1. So if we call this third side c for the hypotenuse, we know that x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, so those are their two legs squared, equals c squared. So if we want to figure out c, we just square root both sides, and we get the square root of all of that equals c, which is our distance between the two points. So we can see that these two things match. So the distance formula is really just the Pythagorean theorem in disguise because you're figuring out the length of two different segments and squaring them, so that's right here, and taking the square root of it all because we don't have the squared here anymore, so we need to square root both sides to get that. The last application of the Pythagorean theorem is it can allow you to figure out if a triangle is acute, right, or obtuse. Now we already know how to figure out if a triangle is right, that would be if it actually exactly works with the Pythagorean theorem. So if a squared plus b squared exactly equals c squared. We also know that if this isn't true, it's not a right triangle. But what we haven't learned is how to determine whether if it doesn't work, if the triangle is acute or obtuse. So here's the pattern. It's acute if instead of being equal, a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared and it's or excuse me it's obtuse if instead of being equal 
a squared plus b squared is less than c squared. One way to remember that is in an obtuse triangle, you have one side that's really long because there's a big obtuse angle that's creating that long side like this. And so in that case, C, there's a long side that's greater than the other two sides. Um, whereas in an acute triangle, all the sides are closer in length. And so this angle is going to be small. C will be smaller than A and B combined when you square them.